Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for this class. Thank you, God, for what you're revealing to us and God for opening our eyes to so many things that we need to see, hear, and know. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, as always, that you would anoint me to teach tonight and anoint those that are listening, God, to hear what the Spirit of the God is saying to the church and us individually in this last day. God, we thank you for what you're going to do with these mighty men and women of God who are, who are attending this school. And we're praying, God, that you would shape them for a greater day and cause them to know you in a greater way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, tonight we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about um, preparing for ministry or understanding the financial piece of ministry. It is very important, and um, we've we've got something going on today that it really disturbs me. We have I see so many, uh, unfortunately, as young people. Well, as if it's even if it's anybody, I just see, but especially so many young people who think that um, ministry is they can just do what they see somebody else do. They can they think they can mimic their way through. They think. Um, they think, well, you can holler, so I can holler too, so therefore it's going to work for me, and so therefore it, it worked for you, but they don't know the story behind the glory. Always remember, there is a story, and most, and if we're honest, it's a serious story behind the glory. And there are so many things that um, I watch so many young people do, so many mistakes jumping out there in ministry, uh, whether it's, uh, it's, it makes me question, number one, it makes me question their call. It also makes me question their motivation. Sometimes we look real good in those robes. We look real good in those collars. We look real good with our hair hooked, fried, dyed, and laid to the side and all of that. And and we're sitting up in an elevated place. And they think as many times we, they, uh, too many people think it's just a glamorous job. But when you get right down to it, and if you do God's work God's way, you're going to discover quickly that it is not a glamorous job. God will call you to do some things or call you to be a type of person that perhaps you're, you're not ready for, but you will be ready for if you prepare it, if you prepare for it and let God use you. But let's talk about the financial piece of ministry. First of all, when you're going into ministry, and basically I'm talking about pastoral ministry, and it can be um, definitely other types of ministries too, because in some churches, some churches are so large that the youth director is all is 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 a full time paid position uh, with benefits. You got uh, health, you got um, dental, you got life insurance, you got all the benefits. Even as just a, a a youth pastor or a youth minister, and some but but some of our churches we don't have all of that. So um, now, if if the church has all that, that's wonderful. Um, but you need to make up your mind or ask the question: Am I going to be bivocational or full time in ministry? Bivocational means that you work a what we call a secular job. Um, some people, some, some church members call it a real job. I, I, I really do not like that term real job because when you pastor and when you are in ministry, that is definitely a real job because sometimes you are called upon all hours of the night. Sometimes you're called upon to do things that, um, that are not convenient. Sometimes you're, yeah, you, you just never know when you're when you're going to be when you're going to have to arise to the occasion. So ministry is definitely a real job, uh, but you need to find out whether you're going to be bivocational or full time in ministry. God does call some people to be full time in ministry, um, and that's a wonderful thing. If you can afford it, 
if, if your church is large enough or you have enough members to support you financially in ministry, then go for it. Um, otherwise, especially if God has called you to do that, then you need to go, go somewhere in sackcloth and ashes before God and say, now, God, if you don't want me to work a secular job to help pay these bills and all of this type of thing, then you're going to have to make the way. And God does make the way. I've seen him do it uh, many times with uh, some of my friends and some of uh, even my former pastor who, 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 who could have pretty much written his ticket anywhere uh, with his with with his degrees and those types of and his knowledge and that type of thing, but God called him to be full time in ministry, and he knew that. And every time he would try to work, it would never work out the way he wanted it to, and so um, so as a result, he found out that it was just best to obey God and let God uh, use him in the full time capacity. And God, where, where the church fell short, um, and sometimes churches do fall short, where the church fell short, then God would make up the difference in another area. Um, I am a, right now, I am a, let's see, I am a tri-vocational pastor. I have, I, have a, I have my own business and I work for the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill at the Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center. And I'm also pastor of First Pentecostal Church. And if you add um, Zoe Fellowship Bible College, that's another job. So I have four jobs. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But I'm, I'm so grateful that God has given me the grace to do what I do. Amen. Because that was just not in the cards for me. At one time, I was... I was full-time pastor for about five years, and then, but that was back when our church was in the country. The only bills we had was the light bill, the telephone bill. Um, we had no mortgage. We had, yeah, and so the church could afford um, to pay me as a full-time pastor, uh, but then we moved into a 12,000-square-foot building right on, right on a main highway, and all of that just went out the window. And I decided, I decided that I am not going to put that burden on the church, but I'm going to make sure that my family is taken care of. So the Lord fixed it where I, I could go to a job and no matter what comes up, if I had to, if I woke up in the morning and I had to go a different way, I could just call my supervisor and say, we won't be in today and everything was fine because, and see, God works those things out for you. You need to consider um, when you're in going into ministry, can you afford to pay health insurance? In some cases, um, depending on who's the pastor, if, 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 if the male is the pastor, then the, then the wife will um, have a job where she can um, cover him and the family in with health insurance. And health insurance can be very expensive, especially if you have a uh, pre-existing condition. Does the ministry warrant a full-time position? You need to ask that question. Is, 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 does this ministry, does it require a full-time position where you, um, where you go to the church and with the office hours and the whole nine? You need to figure out, you know, all that piece. Does, do they really need a full-time minister? The next question is, does the ministry offer a benefit package that offers health, dental, life insurance, um, 401k, retirement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Those things are very, very important. And I'm going to tell you why shortly. Um, but if you're going to be full time in ministry, it's a good idea to be able to take care of you of your uh, physical health and your um, mental health and all of this all of these type, types of things you uh, with all and and also you need to point toward the future because I, I tried I was trying to tell a young pastor on one occasion he was so full of energy so full of energy and he had a he had a church filled with young people and you know 
when young people get around young people, it's just all energy, hype, 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 hype. And uh, the Lord led me to tell him one day we were sitting at um, sitting at, at dinner. And I said to him, I says, now you are jumping high now, but you're going to get older. And you need to begin to build into your ministry the um, possibility of you getting older. And so there, and, 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 and you need to pray and seek the face of God as to what that's going to look like for you. And because there's going to come a day you can't ch ch chase the young people anymore. There's going to come a day you can't run around uh, with, with them like you used to. But you begin, you need to start now um, preparing for those days. Amen. So as a result, that financial piece can be, it can make or break a minister. It can make or break a pastor. It can make or break if you're not careful. But of course, if God called you to it, and you better know that it's God, you will know that God has called you to it because he will provide, provide for your every need. But these things are important. The, the, that benefit package um, that where you have health insurance, dental insurance, life insurance, because you need all of these things. And not only, on, not only that, but you need some type of retirement. Um, it is a, it, it's, it's, I have really been so embarrassed to go to some funerals of great leaders. Oh my goodness. Great men, great evangelists, great, great people who travel all across the country, travel here and there. I mean, just making money and preaching and just doing well. And then all of a sudden they get sick and they can't do what they used to do, and then they die, and they we have to receive an offering to put them in the ground. They have to send out a, a GoFundMe page to uh, take care of the um, of the funeral expenses, and that's that should never be in the body of Christ. You need to prepare. You need to have life insurance. You need to be able to take care of all of those things. Um, and, and the, this is the nuts and bolts. This is the common sense part of ministry. Um, you need to be able to go to the hospital if you need to. I'm reminded of one minister who, who, who fell, he was cutting a limb out of his, um, uh, off of a tree in his yard and he was standing up on this ladder and he fell off the ladder and all of a sudden it caused this bump to come up on his shoulder. A little small egg-sized bump. But he never would go get it taken care of because he didn't have health insurance. He didn't, he, I mean, he couldn't go to the doctor because, you know, to go to the doctor, you would have to pay cash um, because he didn't have any type of insurance. And it wasn't, I mean, he, thank God the Lord kept him uh, for many, many, many years. And that thing just kept on growing and growing and growing until it was a mass sitting up on his shoulder. And um, and fortunately, it was just some type of uh, tissue growth or something like that that wasn't, um, that, wasn't um, that dangerous. It was benign, so to speak. Um, but yet and still, he could not take care of it because I don't, he didn't have health insurance. And so therefore, and you get sick, you can't go to the doctor. You get all of these different types of things. And these are things are real. These things are real. And I, I watch so many pastors, uh, great leaders um, now in their 70s, uh, in their 80s pushing 90 years old, still have to pastor a church because they don't have any, that's their only income that they have, and they never prepared for retirement. Not only have they not prepared a Joshua to take their place, but, and, and, but in their mind, uh, that school of thought in their mind, I've, I've got to be here until death do us part. In other words, I've got to preach the gospel I've got to preach the gospel until, uh, you know, I die. Till I die, die, die. You know, uh, I'm going to serve God anyhow until I die. But I'm going to serve God anyhow until I die. But I promise you, at a certain age, um, uh, I, I am coming out as a pastor. 
I don't want to pastor past a certain age. I really don't because it's it's not mm -mm. now somebody else needs to take this over when I by the time I turn 70 or by the time I turn 67 or whatever. So I need to be having somebody else coming behind me. I need to be grooming somebody to take this ministry where it needs to go so that I can go fishing when I get ready. In other words, I will always work in ministry. I will always preach the gospel, but I do not have to pastor a church because pastoring is stressful. Pastoring can be, oh my goodness, it can, it can be very, and the older you get, the less tolerance you get. Now, now some of you, all of y'all are young, so y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But when you get a certain age, uh, you, you, somebody can say something to you and you just go off right quick at it because your tolerance level has gone down to nothing. And you, and you snap before you think, you know, all that type of stuff, because look, I'm, I'm 65 now and, and I feel like I can say what I want to say the way I want to say it. And you just have to put up with it, suck it up, <laughs> root hog and die, whatever. Uh, but you, and, but you don't need to be that way as a pastor. Amen. Especially as a senior pastor, so um, what you're so you need to prepare for the future. Make sure that you have some type of uh, health insurance, some type of. Well, I basically want to talk about a four hundred one k plan, which is a savings account, or and and retirement. Make sure that you're putting something in, even if you are full time. Make sure you're putting something in Social Security, so you can have, so you can draw Social Security at some point, whether it be from a secular job that you are working, amen, or whether it be your full time position. You can do that, but you need to make sure that these things are in place so you don't have to, um, so you're not forced to be in a position that you no longer can afford to be there uh, and mentally and physically. Uh, but I've watched so, I have seen so many pastors of, of 85 years old still pastoring a church. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as you've got plenty of help. And, and of course, if that's the if that if that's what God has called you to do, have at it. But yet and still, you don't need to be doing that because that's the only source of income that you have. So you need to be make sure you prepare financially and consider the financial piece, especially if you are married. Now let's let's move on to my the next the next topic that I want to cover, which is you need to make sure that your family is on board with what you are doing. Family is extremely important. And you must consider the family. How does ministry, first of all, you need to ask yourself, how is this ministry that I'm in, whether it be running the soup kitchen or whether it be pastoring a church, whether it be whatever your, whether you are a full-time evangelist or whatever, whatever the situation is, whatever God has called you to do, how is it affecting my spouse? I have seen some things oh, down through the years. Um, the founder of our church, a great woman of God, powerful preacher, good preacher, a hardworking woman, um, but her husband was, I'm just going to say questionably saved. Uh, back in those days, many men would, would, if they had a sanctified wife and if they weren't saved or a lot of them, they, some of them were wise enough to say, okay, you do what you want to do. You do what God has called you to do, but just leave me alone. Okay. And so in, 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 from a distance, sometimes they would support them in ministry, uh, but not, not personally, not they, a lot of times they wouldn't be there, uh, in the service, but they would maybe might send a couple of dollars here and there. But I, I remember she used to always teach the women. She says, if your husband is not saved, uh, do not leave, do not come to church without leaving a meal on that stove, without leaving some food, on the stove without cooking and make, taking care of, of your husband, uh, especially when it comes to eating, because what is he going to think? You running all over the country, you're preaching the gospel, you're doing this, you're doing that. 
and you're you're and, and he's sitting at home hungry and upset and and mad and so forth and so on and and he's getting madder about a minute you know you now now that was back in those days uh, yeah and it was it would it could have it could be rough but times have not changed much so how does ministry how will it affect or how does it affect your spouse the person that you are married to you can't, it's not a good thing to be ripping and running all ways and your husband or your wife even, even is just sitting over there going like, okay, I guess he'll come back home later. I guess, I guess he'll come back home sometime. Well, I ain't seen him in three days. I ain't, you know, they, they're supposed to be at a convention, supposed to be here, supposed to be there. And yet you're just, and you spend all of your time preaching the gospel. You spend all of your time uh, ministering to other people. You spend all of your time but you don't pay any attention to that spouse, the one that you went down the aisle with and, and said, I will marry you forever and ever, amen, and all of that, for richer, for poor, for, uh, for in sickness and in health until death do us part. Uh, of course, sometimes that's kind of a joke today, but anyway. But how will ministry affect your, affect your spouse? It's extremely important especially if they're not on the same spiritual plane as you. You need, you need to make some, you, you have to make some adjustments to make sure that they get the attention that they need from you so that you can do those things that, that God has called you to do. And you are not, if, uh, you're not neglecting God, but you're neglecting God if you neglect your spouse. Amen. You're neglecting God if you neglect your spouse. I'll say that one more time. You're neglecting God if you're neglecting your spouse because they're going to be there when nobody else is there if you're, if you're blessed like that. But ministry is going to have an effect on you. I remember when I was told, I was told, told, not asked, but told that I was going to be the next pastor of our church uh, my wife didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. None of us saw it coming. Uh, we had just had my uh, my first child was uh, had just come home from the hospital, being born two and a half months premature, and we had just brought her home from the hospital at the end of January, and um, is here comes February, and I'm now I am the pastor of my home church. And okay, so there was a whole lot of trying to figure out what are we doing here and uh, how are we going to do this and all this types of all these types of things. Let's let's move on uh, to the children. How will how does ministry affect the children? Sometimes people think that the children don't matter. They'll just do. They'll just go and be whatever you want them to be, and they'll just fall in line. But you've got to understand, just like the spouse, ministry affects the children too. Why do you think they always say that the preacher's kids are the worst kids? Sometimes they, how many of you have ever heard that term, the preacher's kids are the worst kids? Sometimes that is true because the preacher uh, does not spend enough time with his children. Amen. And they, they get very resentful. I remember walking through that piece uh, with two, I have two girls and I remember that there would be times I would have to go to a funeral and my wife was working and I, and so in, in to go to this funeral, of course I didn't have to preach or anything like that, but I remember on one particular occasion, I, I did it several times, but on one particular occasion, my youngest daughter was probably, I don't even think she was walking yet or she might have just started walking. And my oldest daughter was probably three, four years, probably about, about three years old. And so I come through the door with these one child in the arm and the other child holding my hand and we walk into the back of the church and we walk down the aisle. And it, it, would, it had to be 20 people saying, Pastor Taylor, let me hold that baby. Let me hold that baby. No, no. But you can't go up there with them, Jim children. I, watch me. And so um, I remember that like, like it was yesterday. We went up, we viewed the body, 
And so they were trying to figure out, uh, well, we want to put you on the pulpit. You, you, you the pastor of such and such church. And you're the, we want to put you. No, I'm not sitting in the pulpit. That's not important. These girls right here, are my, that's, this is my assignment. And so they found me a place over on the side in the, in the little, uh, what they call the amen corner, the deacon's corner. And they set me over there. And me and my, I made, I made so many women mad that day because I would not let them hold my children. I did not care. These are my children. And we, this is, this is, uh, this is uh, girls and daddies day out. Although we had a funeral, if I had to go to a nursing home, they went with me and I would promise some ice cream afterward. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sometimes I would have to promise them little gifts and little whatever. Uh, but I've got to go. I've got to go visit sister so-and-so. I've got to go to the hospital. I've got to do this. But y'all going with me. Okay. Uh, and it was because my, only because my wife was working and, uh, or out of town or whatever. But but if I was taking care of the children, I took care of the children. And today we have that kind of, me and my girls, we have that kind of bond. Uh, they they are they are true daddy's girls until mommy wants to go shopping. But anyway, uh they're true daddy's girls. And um yeah, they'll they they'll hurt you over their daddy now. Yeah. Because I spent time with them. Um spent time with them fishing. Uh, spent time with them. I would sometimes I would take them shopping, whatever, and and um, take the time to teach these, teach them those things that men need to teach their daughters. Amen. Um, how how to find a good man and all that kind of stuff. What to look for, and who, what not to look for. What to, which ones you need to throw throw back. Amen. All that kind of stuff. But uh, but ministry affects children. There are hundreds of of pastoral children of uh, pastor's kids that need counseling because they were neglected by mother and father over the years. Every time when there was an award program, I was just talking to a young lady just the other day. She said her father was a pastor. And she says, if, if there, if the awards night was on Wednesday night and they had prayer meeting, he was going to prayer meeting and he would not go to the awards banquet or he would not go to the awards uh, whatever uh, program to see her get her a little award or whatever because ministry was more important and but you have to you have to pray and seek the face of God and put diligent time in making sure you have a balance with the spouse and with the children somebody said earlier before we um got on they said kids don't forget now, i wrote that down so i could bring it back children don't forget how much time you spent with them children don't forget the fact that you were at the football game when you should have been uh you know at somebody's church or you cancel your whatever to be with them you can't do it all the time but you need to do it sometimes that you need to always try to make keep a balance between you and your children and your spouse, because family is important. How will ministry affect the extended family, the in-laws, the the um, the the brother-in-laws and sisters-in-laws, all those types of things? These are these are questions you need to ask yourself, or things that you need to be about. Okay, God, since God instituted the family, should the family should ministry, ministry should, excuse me, let me read this again. Since God instituted the family, ministry should not destroy the family. Since God instituted the family, where, where, wherewithal shall a man leave his mother and his father and cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh and, and so forth, be fruitful and multiply. So therefore God has instituted the family, but ministry should not destroy the family and we're we're seeing now we're seeing more and more ministers getting divorces and 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 children just going crazy and just all kinds of situations that's happening because pe people are not intentionally putting a balance in their family structure first corinthians chapter 7 uh find that as quickly as you can first corinthians chapter 7 
think I had it up just a second ago. Yes. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse 32 reads, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried cares for the things that belong to the Lord, how he or she may please the Lord. Now, when you are, this is talking to single people. If you are single, you don't have a husband that you have to consider. You don't have children, perhaps, that you have to consider. You don't, you don't have those restrictions. You don't have those things that you need to, you know, adhere to. Or, uh, but, but then that's when you're single. But if you are married, but he, verse 33 says, but he that is married cares for the things, for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife or husband. Verse 34, um, there is, there's difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and spirit and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Now, and of course, we've already talked about that. When you are single, you are free to fly anywhere you want to fly. Run as many revivals as you want. If you want to run revivals uh, back to back for 17 weeks, you, you can do it because you, ain't, you don't have chick nor child. You're free to go. And, 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 and that's, that's one of the blessings of being single. But when you are married, you must always consider, you must always consider your spouse, consider their needs, consider, um, you know, do you have food in the house? Do you, <laughs> those types of things. Are the bills paid? Those types of things. So you need to make sure that you take care of the house. Um, and and when, you're, when you do that, you're not, you really, some people will try to say, well, you're neglecting God. No, you're not neglecting God because God instituted the family. And when you take care of the family, then God will take care of you. And God will make a way. He'll open up a door. And so therefore, I, I, don't ever sit around and feel, well, if I didn't have this husband, if I didn't have these children, if I didn't do this, if I, wouldn't, if I would, didn't have this, then I would be able to just do more for the Lord. Well, you're not there. So therefore, don't sit around and, 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 and bellyache, but just praise God you have what you have. Because I promise you, if you keep, you keep living, the day you're going to get older, and one of these days, those same children, you don't want those children when you are 80 years old and you, you, you need somebody to feed you. You don't want them throwing food in your face and say, here, eat the best you can because, you, you know, you didn't care for me when I was a kid. And you know, Children don't forget. They do not. I promise you, they do not forget. Oh, I remember one time my youngest daughter, I took her to and I had to go visit one of the members in a nursing home and she was so cute. This one little lady uh, saw her and she just grabbed her and kissed her. She didn't have no teeth in her mouth. And, 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 and I think my daughter still is, is terrorized, about, uh, terrorized about that today. She'll bring it up every now and then. <laughs> She's 26, 27 years old now. And she'll, she'll bring it up every now and then. You remember that, that time that woman kissed me and she didn't have no teeth in her mouth and all the other. Da, 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 da. But yet and still, she was with her daddy. So that's what was important. Or they were with their mother and doing ministry. And you instill in them the responsibilities of ministry. So you must consider your monies and you must consider the family. Family is extremely important. Um, let me say this. I sent you those uh, that article about different ministers who many of which when they go to school and they don't last hardly five years and they they give up the ministry. You've got to understand how how some of those things can be. 
Some people go into ministry just because it's just another job. It's just a hey, it's it's okay. If I got to if I got to work at the factory, well then I'm just gonna go in ministry. It's just another job. It means the call of God on their life means absolutely nothing. And so the to them, yeah, I can I can put together a sermon and and stand up in front of these people and so forth and so on. And I can go visit people, I can go be nice to people, that type of thing. But after a while, what begins to happen for some of those, because they have not been called to it, what begins to happen is the pressure of it begins to hit. And they don't know, they don't have that prayer life that helps them balance. And then all of a sudden it, it does affect their family. And they, you find you, that ministers are constantly getting divorced uh, from their from their spouses and and then the children grow up they in broken homes and those types of things and it affects it affects so many things on so many levels but you need to be aware of this before you go into ministry no matter what ministry you're going into never ever let ministry make you forget your spouse or make you forget your children or make you forget your mother or your father. Amen. There, there's sometimes you might have to, you just might have to take care of mama. You might have to just go take care of daddy. And you may have to put some things on hold. Says, okay, I'm not going to be there this Sunday. Uh, somebody else preaching my place. You, you got to do what you got to do. But it's very important that you take care of family. And and learn and if and if you God like I'll I'll repeat this again if God has called you into full time ministry, then God is going to make the way, which means you're going to be walking by faith. I I'm pleased to announce that on December the twentieth, uh, that's going to be my last working day at UNC Chapel Hill, and um, my official retirement day is going to be January one. So that's one job gone. But thank God I've got money coming in from that job. I'm, I'll am i be living off of the retirement of that particular job. So I'm just not walking away with anything. The job has good benefits and so forth and so on. And so uh, as a result of that, I will be able to do more at this stage of my life in ministry. And so um, I'll, I'll be more full time in terms of, of terms of ministry, but it took um, um it, that that took 19 years that was 19 years in the making but god has been good to me and god has been good to the church and god has blessed us amen as a result of our sacrifice and my children still like me my wife actually still loves me i think yeah i think she i think she still loves me anyway yeah, <laughs> i'm almost sure of it uh she she's still here amen but uh but i praise god uh because Things do get better and things do change. So no matter what ministry you are going in, make sure you consider your finances and make sure you consider your family. Okay? I am going to stop right here and we're going to open it up for discussion and questions. <laughs> 